Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the manthatcanproject.com to find out more. You're listening to The Man That Can Project with Lockie Stewart, a global movement created to empower men and open up what's really going through their minds by having real and raw conversations about life's unique challenges and our individual ways of processing it all. Welcome to The Man That Can Project. Today, I'm going to share with you three things that you can do to become more productive because, well, who doesn't want to become more productive? I feel... The busier life gets, the more responsibilities that we get, the more social media platforms that pop up. I feel like my productivity is going down because I'm losing focus and I'm becoming way more distracted. Uh, But I spend a lot of time helping my clients become more efficient and become more productive so that they can then spend time on other things that they enjoy from their life. So how to get more bang from your buck uh, in various other areas of your life. But gentlemen, how was your Christmas? I would love to hear from you guys. Remember, if you're obviously um, on social medias, share this episode, but even just right below what you uh, got up to for Christmas and how it was for you. I know New Year's isn't too far away, which is pretty bloody exciting. Uh, I'm going to have a little shindig, and that will be my last uh, alcoholic evening for alcoholic, alcoholic drinking evening. Uh, for the foreseeable future. So I'm excited about that just to get the head clear and uh, create more time for myself. Definitely, definitely looking forward to that. Gentlemen, you've heard me talking about it a whole heap now, the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can join now. We're kicking off a fresh 12-week game plan on the 17th of January, 2022, right? Great time to start the new year. Uh, You can think about some goals that you want to set and then we're going to help You build more grit and resilience through getting you to do cold shower challenges. Some of the blokes, we do the 5K challenge where every day for the week, they have to uh, complete five kilometers, whether it's run, ride, walk, five minutes in the ice bath, something like that that's really going to challenge you. And the consistent daily challenge of it is also a challenge. So if you want to do things like that and get around like-minded blokes who are pursuing better who are wanting to really maximize this year and completely change their life then you want to get into the strong men of value academy but that's all i've got for you on that gentlemen let's talk about well let me share the three things that i would recommend doing i've got a whole heap more of this but let's keep it simple with three because i know you're probably driving to work but do these three things to become more productive first one stop multitasking We all think the more things that we're balancing on our plates, the more productive we sound or the more we're going to get done throughout the day. But think about how often you get distracted, right? Even the fact of having your emails open on your computer while you may be doing another task and then you get a ping, whatever it is, and it steals your focus. You've gone from being very productive and focused on achieving an outcome with what you're currently doing to then, oop. I need to go address this other challenge. And let's be honest, how often does an email come through that is just like, oh, have a great day? More often than not, it's adding something to your plate. You've then got to make another decision or you'll just come back to it later and it's going to be sitting there in the back of your mind. So that's an example, but stop multitasking, right? Allow yourself to complete one task and utilize that that feeling of satisfaction from completing that current task to motivate you for the next one, right? Create momentum. It's one of our pillars, guys. Momentum is what creates success from my experience because you're consistently doing good shit. Or obviously momentum and bad things can you know, do the opposite, but I'm going to assume that everyone listening here is being more intentional with what 
or how you're spending your time. So stop multitasking. That is step number one to becoming more productive, right? It doesn't sound that glamorous, but it's super simple. But I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to think about what you've done throughout the day and how many other things you had on the go. Even think back the last hour. How many things were you doing at once? Were you on the phone and scrolling Facebook? Were you pretending to read a book but had your emails open? Were you listening to this podcast and driving? That's right. There's probably a few of you doing that, but that's probably good multitasking. This is just a bit of background noise for you, I hope. But just think about that. For important things, gentlemen and ladies, don't multitask. Think about the 80-20 rule. So 20%. Right, get this, 20% of your activities will determine 80% of your results. So here's what I would recommend doing. Spend 80% of your time on those 20% of activities. So therefore, you're creating a bigger win, right? What I've noticed, and I guess I'll tie this into the 80-20, nod your head if your life feels like it's really busy. It's almost overwhelming when you think about the things that you need to complete today. Because if you're nodding your head, that is normal. And unfortunately, it shouldn't be normal. We choose to say yes to things. We choose to continue to put things on our plate because we feel we're being more productive. We're not. It's proven that you're being less productive. There's a lot of things that you spend time on that is not generating results for you. It's the reason why within the 12-week game plan, there's three spots, right? You set your tasks for the day, but you also decide on the intention for those tasks. Now, if the tasks that you choose to do for the day aren't the specific tasks that are going to have the biggest improvement on you achieving your goals, then you need to reorder your priorities or you need to find a way to um, clear them out. You know, I had had a meeting with a client uh, later last week, uh, sorry, a few weeks ago, and he had four things that he needed to get done before he went on holidays. And one of those was to write Christmas cards for his clients, right? And for me, when I was looking at, okay, well, his skill set is this, and this is where he really gets, um, uh, this is what he really gets paid for, sorry. Is it possible to outsource those Christmas cards Because the best use of his time and serving his clients is not writing Christmas cards, although it's very thoughtful. But when you're extremely busy, right, it's it's still the thought. You know, you're investing money to for someone else to write them. That might be the best step, so that you know it's going to obviously generate results. It's going to um, provide value to your clients, but it's also going to allow you to provide a better service because you're spending time on the things that only you can do. So I I highly encourage you to think about that. Um, What are some tasks that you can outsource or things that aren't necessarily the best use of your time? Okay, and writing cards might be the best use of your time. I don't know what's going on in your life, but it's for you to think about. Okay, but what is the best use of your time and are you spending time doing that, right? Or how much time are you spending on things that aren't moving you closer to where you want to be just for the sake of being busy? Like think about, actually do this now. If you've got a pen and paper, if you're driving, just even say out to you, what's one thing that you've got on today that you know or feel isn't going to add value to your life? It might be a coffee meeting. It might be something that you've said yes to. And I highly encourage you to cancel it and free that time up. It might be an hour, it might be 15 minutes, but then either take some downtime for yourself or fill that time up with something that's going to improve your quality of life and move you towards your goals, right? That is going to be another step and an important thing that you can do to become more productive with your time. Next one, take regular breaks. None of us can focus for long periods of time, unless you're gaming, of course. I've done marathons back in the day where I played Call of Duty. I don't know whether I was fully focused, but I was definitely there. And I think a lot of us are aware of that. There's you know, you might be there, but you're scrolling Facebook or you're thinking about other things and your focus and intention isn't there. So maybe set, try this. Set an alarm on your phone every 50 minutes. Within that 50 minutes, take five minutes or so, three to five minutes or even 10 minutes to go for a walk, grab yourself a coffee, um, stretch, do some body weight movement, 
But what this will really allow you to do is it's going to allow you to recharge, right? Refocus, which is really important for the next next block of time, and reassess. Right? Have you gone off track? Have you gotten distracted? Because like with the game plan, the reason why we do it quarterly, there's no point going 12 months and going off track. You're going to be further down the road that you don't want to be down, whereas 12 weeks is much more manageable to claw back from, to come back from. So take those regular breaks, Jensen. You know, it doesn't have to be 50 minutes. Do something that works for you, but I would encourage you to sort of track your productivity. So maybe even write down and try this task for a day. From the moment you walk into the office, so say you start at 9 a.m. and you finish at 5 p.m. Create a little spreadsheet or something like that where you write down everything that you achieved in 15-minute blocks. What did you achieve this 15-minute block? What did you achieve this 15-minute block? And notice that if you're wasting time or not because what I promise you you've probably done, there will be at least four to five 15 minute blocks where you weren't that productive. And if you know you're not going to be productive, you may as well take a break to get outside, get some sunlight. Like I said, do do one of those things that I mentioned or do something else so then you can come back refocused and re-energized to complete the task at hand. So there are my three tips. I've got a whole heap more, which I share in our uh, Strong Men of Value Academy. I just actually put a post up for it. But there are three that you can take away today. And that is all for me today, gents. Now, remember, if you do get value from this episode or you have gotten value from this episode, share it on your Instagram, share it on your Twitter, share it on your Facebook. Make sure you tag me at Lachlan Stewart, L-A-C-H-L-A-N-S-T-U-A-R-T. I look forward to uh, re-sharing that because the man at Camp Project really is driven by word of mouth and driven by you guys sharing episodes and sharing things that you you learn. So every time you guys take them a moment to do that, I highly appreciate it because you know it just shows other men out there that this is a great place to, you know, learn better habits, to be held accountable, to hang around like minded, high achieving blokes. And, you know, I'm I'm grateful for you guys being a part of it and also helping it grow. So have a ripper week, gentlemen. I look forward to, or I rip a New Year's, sorry. I look forward to seeing you crush 2022. This, this is me actually signing out of 2021. See you guys later. And 2022 is going to be so much bigger, so much better, and so much more exciting. Thanks for all your support this year and bring it on. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart, and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.